will now discuss on ion implant machine. The schematic of ion implantation machine is shown in this diagram. And in this diagram, the four major parts are shown. One is the ion source, then ion acceleration module, mass separation and there is mass analyzer model and the last one is the end station. These are the three basic modules. One is ion source module, ion acceleration module, mass separation module, that means purification you can say and last one is the end station. And at the end station, one is the beam sweeping and other one is the substrate holder. I mean target holder. So, these are the end station. Now, details of individual block I will discuss. The first one is the ion source. The ion source may be gaseous and may be solid in case of ion implantation technique. If it is a gaseous source, then the amount of gas flown into the source that can be adjusted and uh, through adjustment of the orifice through which gas comes into the chamber. So, after entering the chamber, that there, there will be a, 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 a this discharge tube and that uh, this arc discharge tube is there. So, in the arc discharge module, the gases will dis, uh, discharge and it will form some of the ions as well as neutral. But if the ion source is a solid one, then you have to vaporize. Then the solid vapor is basically uh, the, those solid vapors enter into the, the earth chamber and then it will ionize. That means the ion source means in the ion source chamber, you have to create ions. That means from the gaseous or the solid vapors by this discharge phenomena, arc discharge phenomena, we ionize. For example, if I use the BF3 gas, then if we ionize, we can get boron ions, we can get BF2 ions, we can get the fluorine ions, okay, and you can get some neutral atoms also. In case of similarly arsine or phosphine, we can guess, we can get uh, the hydrogen as well as some electrons and the arsenic or phos ph uh, phosphine ions, okay. Now, the gas flow into the arc chamber is adjusted by the small orifice and that orifice is, is basically uh, in this particular ion source module is there from the cylinder gases is, are coming and then, then they are charged and there uh, the in the in this arc discharge tube the breakup of the feed gas into variety of atomic and molecular species will take place to ionize some of the species and there some of the negative ions also will be formed and those negative ions are not used for ion implantation purpose although they are not much in number but they have to be separated out from the ion beam. And the positive ions which are created in the ion source, those are of much interest and those positive ions are attracted to the exit side of the source chamber which is biased at a large negative potential with respect to filament. Okay? And that means the only I want to extract only the ions, that means the extract chamber the uh, uh, through which the, uh, these, uh, the ions will come, if I keep it at a extreme negative potential, then obviously the negative ions will not be extracted there, only positive ions will be extracted. And those positive ions after taking out from the ion source, they are entered into an acceleration chamber that is the second one. The gas pressure into the ion source are normally kept within the range of 
10 to the power minus 5 to 10 to the power minus 7 torque and the maximum ion current inside the ion source is few milliampere. So, so after ions are formed your next job if to select the desired implant species. As I told you the implantation species will be not only the positive ion, some neutral ions will be there, some negative ions will be there, some neutrals are not ion basically neutral atoms, neutral atoms will be there, some negative ions and electrons will be there and along with some other undesired impurity ions may be there which are coming from the uh, impurity of the gas. Okay. And so your job is to select the desired ion from the ion source and that selection is done with the help of a technique which is known as mass analyzing technique. Now the schematic of a, the, 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 this drawing, uh, the drawing of the ion implanted machine is shown in this particular diagram you can see here. So here uh, several uh, distinct chambers are there. One is the ion source here and through which the gas, gas is uh, inserted here in this particular orifice and as I mentioned the size of the orifice is changed here and this is the arc chamber and this is the exit side through which gases are the ions through which ions are extracted and that is kept at negative potential. That is the second method is a means for their extraction. First is the ion source, next one is a means for their extraction and the next one is acceleration. So that means just after extraction the energy of the ions may not be that much so that it will travel a distance. After extraction you have to accelerate the ion and very simple way of acceleration is to apply negative potential in their path, path. Gradual, gradually if you increase the negative potential, so that will be accelerated more and more and it will follow a path. So after extracting then it is, it is extracting from the ion chamber, it is accelerated and after that it is focused because that those are diverging in nature and in this diverging nature has to be converging beam and and for convergence you can apply again electrostatic potential to converge and after convergence then it enters into a mass analyzer. Okay. Mass analyzer is a is a very important important module in case of a ion implanter and that mass analyzer job is to select the actual ions which I want to implant into the silicon crystal. Now that is done with the help of a heavy magnet. So that is a basically the magnet because the ions are charged particles and they will be, they will be deflected by magnetic field also. Okay. And this deflection is that means they will follow a different path after if the ions are subjected to a magnetic field depending on the magnetic field the ions will follow different path okay and this is given by a relation which is nothing but m v square by r is equal to q b v just i can uh, write down that relation you can see and that relation is given by m v square by r is equal to q v v and the r is given by m v divided by q B, which is again written as this Q M by Q V E X 
t and this is a is extraction potential this v x t is is extraction potential now in this relation m is mass of the ion and v is the velocity r is the radius the radius of curvature it follows q is charge and the v is velocity and b is the magnetic field this is the magnetic field okay and from this relation you can get the value of r which is the radius of curvature that is path the ion follows that is given by m v by q v then depending on the charge and mass you see m by q is this one depending on that if b is a magnetic field magnetic field b is fixed for a cert certain magnet okay now v is the velocity the velocity acceleration velocity by the electrostatic potential whatever acceleration you have you have uh, adjusted in the acceleration tube now the r that means the path the ion will follow depends on the m by q that means mass by charge ratio that value will be the determining factor of the selection of a particular path so now you see as just i told you after the ion source you have extracted the ions and in that ions maybe some are the in case of uh, bf3 implantation some of the bf2 molecule some of the boron molecule fluorine molecule or neutral atom so lot of species will be there out of those species which are neutral they will not be at all deflected by this magnetic field because they are charged no charge and that will no interaction in the magnetic field and electrostatic field so they will follow those neutral atoms will follow they will not be deflected follow the uh, the uh, these uh, without deflection without deviation they follow direct path okay but the charged particles but depending on the mass of the particle and charge of the particle they will follow different path because their r value will be different this r value will be different so they will follow different path and this is the principle which is used in the mass analyzer okay now come back to this drawing here so just after the mass analyzer again they 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 they, they travel through an acceleration tube acceleration tube and there the the acceleration tube is very long and high vacuum is maintained inside the tube because if the vacuum is not high so it will it will undergo lot of collision with other gas molecules so their energy may be lost and so that uh, the acceleration acceleration chamber is this one this acceleration chamber vacuum is maintained of the order of 10 to the power 6 tau Okay, so that the collision will be as minimum as possible. So that means here you can see the rejected ions are hitting here. These are the rejected ions. So after analyzer, these are following the direct path rejected, and these are bending path. It will take some bend depending on the mass and charge ratio. So then the acceleration chamber. You see the accelerator consists. You see here it consists of a set of rings. attached to a voltage divider network the set of rings here you can see that are these are they are attached with a voltage divider network adjusting the power supply that feeds the divider network adjust the ion energy so gradually you change the power of this grid and so gradually it will be accelerated more and more and after the acceleration what we do next again it is focused beams are focused again and that focusing is done with the help of how the electrostatic field so first you have accelerated from 
here just after extraction, then the beams are again focused, the diverging beam are converged, then those are purified with the mass analyzer. This is the mass analyzer structure, we have purified it and after that neutral atoms are rejected, they are directly heated here, rejected. The actual ions are passed through the acceleration tubes, so they are some grids are there, lot of uh, the, uh, the plates and there you can apply potential, gradually higher potential are, are, are applied uh, in different grids so that the ions will be accelerated more and more and after that again the, these are focused and those, now one point is again important during the passage, during the passage of the ions through the acceleration tube, it may so happen some of the ions again may be neutralized because the electrons, although we told that, that the positive ions and negative electric field, so that will be attracted, electrons will be repelled back, but in spite of that, some of the may, there may be some collision one or two or rare, uh, although it is not favored, some collisions will be there and there some electrons may be present in this path and those electron and ions may recombine again and it will form a neutral atom. And those neutral atoms we have to again separate out from the ion beam, so that is another job just after acceleration. So those neutral atoms, uh, how to stop those neutral atoms? And these, these, for that reason, you see here, the electrostatic deflection plates are used, electrostatic deflection. And there, the depending on the electrostatic field, again the ions will be, I'll, uh, ions will be diverted, that will be inclined that that will take a bend and the neutral atoms and other things will be, will take direct path and it will, if you use a, 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 a if you obstruct those atoms here and they, they will terminate here. They cannot reach up to the substrate holder, this is the substrate holder, okay. So in this way, uh, the neutral atoms are deflected and they, they do not follow the bend, but instead strike a beam stop. This is a beam stop here. In this beam stop, they will strike, they will follow the actual beam path. The ions are sufficiently deflected by the plates to continue to travel down the tube. Now, now those, those ions reached at the end station. And at the end station, in this part, so they are scanned and those scanning are known as a raster scanning. Now let us now look into this, uh, the diagram slides here, here. If you look into this presentation here, you can see the, this beams, that means end station, it has reached the end station and these are the wafers. Now on the wafers, if wafers are fixed, say it is a 4 inch diameter or 6 inch diameter wafer, so on the wafers, uh, these iron beams has to be, has to be scanned, otherwise it will be implanted on a particular point. If we scan the beam, so over the surface, the implantation will take place. Now, there are two types of uh, uh, rastering or scanning is shown here. In the first one, first figure, you see there is a, the vertical deflection plate and the horizontal deflection plate, just like in a CRO you have, you know, so for deflection of the cathode ray beam we use two plates, one is vertical deflection plate, one is horizontal deflection plate and there the cathode rays are deflected but here the ions are deflected. So, you can apply potential here in this plate so that the beam will be deflected in this direction, in vertical direction and these two are, the, the deflection will be 
the not vertical but horizontal direction. Okay. The electrostatic rastering commonly used in medium current machine and there after after uh, scanning the wafer, complete scanning the wafer, the next wafers will come. So, after scanning is over, then the next will come like that. The one by one wafers are coming. In this case, depending on the dose, each wafer takes considerable time for completion of the implantation, depending on the dose. Okay. And the second one is another sort of scanning, there the, the one, uh, the beam direction is not, here you can see the one deflection plate that is horizontal deflection plate is used only, there is no vertical deflection plate. And here the wafers are fixed over a, over the circumference of a rotating, rotating uh, plate. This plate is rotated, you see, and at the circumference of the plate, the wafers are arranged in this fashion, and the beam is incident on any of the wafer, and the now scanning is only horizontal direction. So now, if it continuously rotates and only horizontal direction is scanned, then you can see that at a particular time more number of wafers will be scanned and implantation speed will be higher. So, in the second technique the throughput of the machine will be higher. The semi electrostatic scanning used on some high current machine. Okay. drawn it diagram. So, now these two type of scanning mechanism are found in different machines for medium current we use vertical and horizontal scan and for high current sometimes the second technique you use that is semi electrostatic because here only horizontal scan is used no vertical scan. Now next point is uh, the dose, how to control the dose, this is the energy is controlled by the energy of the acceleration tube, so by that. Now, how the dose is controlled? Dose is controlled by use of a, uh, dose is controlled at the end station by use of a take, uh, by use of a module which is known as a Faraday cup, Faraday cup and in the Faraday cup is nothing but a cage. So, in that cage, the, the cage captures the ions and it terminate if the cage is grounded. So, then the cage captures the ions and it is grounded. So, that means ground to cage there is a current flow. The how much ions are captured by the cage depending on that the current will also change and this will give the dose. More and more ions are captured by the cage the dose will be the more that is known as a Faraday cage or sometimes it is called the Faraday cup that is that is placed at the end station. Okay. The ion current measured by ammeter by ammeter between the Faraday cup and the ground and for a 6 inch diameter wafer typical implant current is in the range of microampere to few tens of milliampere. Now, one thing is important that you see the high energy ions are, are, are implanted on the surface and if the dose is more that means ion current will be more then a heat will be generated on the surface of the wafer. The wafers on the end station for example, end station the Faraday cage or the Faraday cup is capturing the ions. So, if the current is more depending on that the end station will be heated and if end station is heated then the problem is the 
sometimes as I mentioned this, sometimes the photoresist is also used as a mask material and if photoresist is heated after uh, beyond certain temperature, then that photoresist is very difficult to remove. In case of photoresist masking, temperature should be limited within a certain value. Then you can easily remove that photoresist after implantation is over, you have to remove the photoresist that you can easily remove with the photoresist remover solution. But if the photoresist is heated for some time at a temperature of 300 to 500 degree centigrade, then that photoresist will, will be difficult to remove from the surface. And it has been seen that this uh, photoresist when heated uh, nearly 400 to 500 degree centigrade, then outgassing also will take place because photoresist contains some uh, inor organic as well as some carbon material also. So those carbon uh, will make a complex on the surface and those carbon complex is very difficult to remove from the surface. So what is to be done? For high dose implantation, current will obviously higher. So in that case, the nearly 500 degree centigrade heat will be generated and the energy is nearly 15 kilojoule. So a cooling arrangement is to be made at the end station so that the power, uh, so that heat distribution will be there and it will not be heated much. So all end station that is a cooling arrangement in implantation machine, okay. And this cooling arrangement, the main purpose is to reduce the end station temperature so that you can go for photoresist masking, okay. Next is annealing. I mentioned earlier also that all implantation is followed by annealing. During implantation, you create damage and layer will be amorphous and that particular layer cannot be used for device purpose, device application. So you have to remove the damage and the semiconductor material is to be recrystallized that is done with the help of annealing. And after annealing you will get back the electrical activity that means the conductivity or the mobility is attained, you can get it back after annealing process. Furnace annealing causes appreciable redistribution of impurities. Furnace annealing means diffusion furnace or annealing implantation, uh, sorry, oxidation furnace, you can use same furnace for annealing. Actually, uh, for annealing is separate furnace, not the furnace structure is similar to oxidation and diffusion furnace. The controlling part, the arrangement is similar to that. But the same tube is not used for annealing. For annealing, a special tube is used. If you use the oxidation or diffusion tubes for annealing, so again the contamination will be there. Contamination means uh, the diffusion tube, the dopant atoms, again it will be incorporated into that. You do not want that. You want only annealing. So, separate annealing tube is used for this purpose. And furnace annealing is a long time high temperature anneal and there the impurity is the redistribution will take place. That is why to avoid the redistribution, to limit the redistribution, we use the rapid thermal annealing that is RTA. A rapid thermal annealing is highly suitable for shallow junction formation. Okay. Because here you can adjust the thermal budget more accurately. A rapid thermal annealing is, is much advantageous because at a high temperature you anneal it for a shorter time, very short time and that time is nearly uh, 30 second or 60 second or 1 minute like that. But if you do the same thing in furnace, 
your annealing temperature, annealing time is about half an hour approximately. So, uh, the rapid thermal is suitable for shallow junction VLSI. Now, here I will show a schematic diagram of an isothermal rapid annealing system. This is this uh, heat pulse. Heat pulse is a is a uh, model name of a uh, rapid thermal annealing system. So here you can see uh, the this is the uh, quartz isolation tube. These are on which you can keep the substrate. This is the substrate wafer. You can keep here and here another dummy wafer is kept to monitor the temperatures. And this round shaped things you what you can see these are tungsten halogen lamps. Tungsten halogen lamps are there. The lamp heating, radiation lamp heating and quartz isolation tube or the quartz carrier here you can put the wafer quartz you can maintain highly clean that is why quartz is preferred in all annealing uh, furnaces and here you can is a cooling arrangement you can see water cool. water cool reflective enclosure this one is the water cool reflective enclosure okay now here one of the feature is is that the temperature in this particular rta system temperature rises very quickly so you see you are just uh, annealing for 45 minute second say to 60 second sometimes. So, the 45 to 60 second means a very small time within that time it, it, the, the uh, rapid thermal system should attain that temperature. And at the same time if you if you want to uh, before taking out the sample it has to be cooled down because outside room temperature is nearly 25 degree centigrade and inside temperature of the rapid thermal system is say 1000 degree centigrade you want to annul it. So, 1000 degree centigrade to 30 degree centigrade again you need annealing time is nearly say 1 minute or say sometimes 45 second. So, after 45 second if you have to take it back to the room uh, uh, ambient environment of the room. So, obviously a thermal shock it will experience and it will crack. So, that means you cannot take out the sample immediately after annealing and and the cooling arrangement in a all in all rapid thermal system is extremely important and very difficult construction because here only the water cooling will not help you. The temperature will raise from room temperature to a certain level. Say that level is say maybe 900 to 1000 degree centigrade. And after say 60 second or 40 second that you can adjust, the timer you can adjust. That means the lamp will be switched off. And this lamp is the source of heat. So, the, the lamp will be switched off after that timer. And at the same time, you have to cool down rapidly from 1000 degree centigrade to the room temperature or little bit above the room temperature. For that, inside that chamber, a blow of nitrogen is sent, high pressure nitrogen or argon gas. All, uh, all uh, since uh, your uh, annealing time is critical, that means is a long, not long time annealing, annealing time is uh, in the range of say as I told you seconds, sometimes 10 seconds, sometimes 20 seconds is done also. In some of application you need 20 seconds or 30 seconds of annealing. 
So, just after the 30 second, automatically a, 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 a surge of nitrogen gas will be there inside and that is, that is you, you cannot open the chamber also. Because if you open the chamber, it will come into the outside environment. Inside the chamber, it is closed and there some the nitrogen blow or surge arrangement should be there immediately after the, that, that um, desired time of annealing. Okay. Some automatic pneumatic valve should be there and, and uh, the whole outside chamber, the quad isolation tubes and the periphery that has to be cooled also and that is done by low, uh, by cold water and that cold water is again sent through a chiller. The water temperature is brought down by chiller arrangement maybe say uh, 4, 5 degree centigrade nearly 6, 7 degree centigrade in that range, temperature range. Water is sent through the uh, circulation pipes in the quartz isolation tube. So that means the cooling is very, very critical in case of this rapid thermal aligning system. And at the same time you see the heating is done uh, from the tungsten halogen lamp. So that is depend on the, the tungsten halogen lamp will be in full efficiency, efficiency and you need then, you have to send the current, very high current. And here the, uh, the supply of the rapid thermal aligning system because because you are sending a very high current of the 100 milliampere, sometimes 80 milliampere current to this, uh, the, the lamp requires for getting 1000 degree centigrade temperature. And another is reflection, reflecting arrangements inside the tube is also important because the if reflective arrangement is not proper, a lot of heat loss will be there. Okay. That is why, so the schematic diagram is so simple but the actual equipment is not so simple. It is a very complicated equipment and highly expensive also because of this, this critical control and critical uh, situation. That means one is criticality is the, the cooling arrangement, another criticality high current requir requirement and another critical thing is you should not, during the annealing, you should not have any other ambient gas because you have to evacuate. Then you have to purge with uh, the either nitrogen or argon. You can annihilate it in neutral gas ambient. Otherwise, uh, the silicon will be reacted with that. Okay, and very good temperature controller and the timer. These are all very critical. Okay, now let us see the the profile in a, a unimplanted profile after annealing in a furnace anneal and this rapid thermal anneal. So here. The just after implantation, we have annealed, and you, you can see the this is the depth, and the furnace anneal is this one, and the Pearson four distribution, and laser anneal. The dotted curve is Pearson four distribution curve theoretical, and the solid curve is experimental curve profile measurement. That is this profile you can measure with the help of the RBS method. I mentioned in diffusion class and RBS method basically it plots count versus the sputtering time. So that is that will effectively give you the, the doping concentration versus the depth. Depth is uh, also shown in the upper scale. So now here you see the 1000 degree centigrade 30 minute anneal and the rapid thermal aline is is a, is a nearly 60 or 80 second rapid thermal aline at, at the same temperature. There the profile, how the profile changes. At the same time, the, the temperature and at what temperature it will be annealed and how much second, so that is, is to be decided by what? by observation of the, the crystal structure because after implantation it is amorphous and after handling it is being recrystallized. 
So, you have to see whether the recrystallization has taken place or not, whether it is partly amorphous and partly crystallized then it is not good. So, so that what should be the actual cycle, cycle means at, uh, the rapid thermal cycle means temperature and time that's, that is the, that has to be judiciously selected from the requirement such that the crystal completely uh, the amorphous uh, after implantation amorphous layer completely recrystallizes. Okay. So, these are the profile and so uh, since uh, the in, in furnace channel it broadens you see redistribution is more. So, the peak concentration broadens. So, in shallow junction formation shallow junction VLSI the furnace annealing after implantation is avoided. Okay. Rapid thermal annealing, annealing is preferred. Now, next I will discuss one of the application of the unimplantation. That application is shallow junction formation. Shallow junction formation is very difficult in diffusion technique, but in iron implantation technique you can easily form shallow junctions. And here some of the profile is shown 60 kV arsenic implanted into silicon as a function of beam tilt angle. There are several techniques by which you can form the shallow junction. Those techniques are one is low energy implant second is tilted ion beam, third is implanted through silicides or polysilicon. These are the techniques normally used in formation of shallow junction. Out of that the low energy implant and tilted ion is related to this ion implantation. Implanted through silicides or polysilicon or dope, uh, uh, silicides or polysilicon again I will discuss this particular thing in a separate class. The low energy that means if you reduce the implantation energy then you can always have lower junction depth. But at the same time you cannot reduce the low dose, the dose should be higher. For example, in a MOS the source and drain is highly doped region. That means high dose low energy implantation is important for shallow junction formation. But if you reduce the energy then maintaining dose very high is rather difficult that is one of the problem. So, low energy high dose implantation is again a area of investigation and area of research nowadays for making shallow junction formation. The reason is the implanted machine if you reduce the energy to say 5 kV or say 10 kV then you cannot maintain easily that much amount of dose because you see dose is just controlled by the, the capture of the ions at the Faraday cage and more capture of the ions means more dose for that you need more acceleration of the and more acceleration means energy will be more, energy will be more. If energy is more means then again the it, there is a probability of higher junction depth, those are related. So, if you want to at the same time energy low and dose high, high dose low energy implantation is rather very difficult technique and special iron implanted machine is evolved day by day to have this shallow uh, to have uh, high energy uh, sorry low energy high dose implantation which is required for shallow junction formation. And the second one is tilted iron beam. So, if uh, the iron beam is tilted then what will happen? Then, then it will it is very high if the angle of the implantation is very large compared to the critical angle then there is not at all channeling is not it and in that case the complete amorphization over a shallow layer will take place. So, that is also used for shallow junction formation 
and if you look into this diagram this uh, the curve of arsenic implantation that also you can see that different tilted angle the profiles are shown here that is 60 kV arsenic on silicon this curves are for 60 kV arsenic on silicon and the this one 0 degree 0 degree tilted angle this is 45 degree next one is this one is 70 degree and this one is 80 degree if you increase the tilted angle from 0 degree to a, uh, say 80 this is 86 degree yeah this is uh, 70 degree this one you, you see here the energy you have kept same that is 60 kV energy even keeping the same energy you are getting RP value different that is by changing the tilt angle. So, a 0 tilt angle means normal incidence, normal incidence in 80 kV gives the RP value means junction depth nearly say 5, uh, uh, 450 angstrom here. In the same energy if you if tilted angle is increased from 0 degree to 45 degree it is coming 250 near. So, 250 is the RP value. Now, from 45 to 70 degree, the RP value is nearly 100, uh, nearly say 100, 100 angstrom. Now, you see 86 degree, it reduces hardly 10 to, uh, not 10, nearly say with uh, 30 to 40 angstrom, just by increasing the tilt angle. In some cases, you get 450 angstrom is the junction depth and here you got only 50 angstrom. But the problem is the channeling tail, this is there. Okay. So, this is one of the technique by which you can form shallow junction. You have not reduced the energy KEV. So, you, you can get a higher dose. Just now I told in the first method low energy implantation, if you reduce the energy, maintaining high dose is difficult, but high dose is required for N plus or P plus junction that is uh, uh, required in, in case of the uh, uh, MOS fabrication, source drain fabrication. So, second prefer, second technique tilted iron angle sometimes are used for making shallow junction and implanted to silicides and polysilicon is another method. Doped silicides are used for shallow junction formation that I will discuss in silicide class, silicide means that is in metallization chapter. Okay. So, with this let me stop today and the next class I will discuss some of the more applications of iron implantation and those applications are one of the uh, uh, major application in SOI technology, Thymox technology, this high energy iron implantation is used for making buried collectors. I will discuss in detail those application in the next class. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.